Hi, travelers. Tara here, Hidden Lotus Tarot. Um, today is September 3rd, 2016. And as promised, I said that I would come back and share some insights that I'd gleaned based upon my sharing video, the one called The Sharing. Um, first thing I would like to say is that I, I want to thank all of you, really, uh, for your emails of support and love and kindness and empathy. Um, really, that means it means so much to me. Um, also, for those of you who emailed me wanting his address and you were ready at the ready with your pitchforks and torches, um, that's appreciative too. But however, we want to always stay and use our, our powers for good and not evil. Okay. Um, and so I had said to you that I was going to come and share some insights, uh, things that I, information that I was receiving, messages that I was receiving in regards to how I needed to move through this particular incident. All right. Um, and I do hope that these messages for some of you, that you can get something out of it. Uh, the first thing I want to, to start with is, um, the tarot is, I am continually amazed uh, by the tarot. I'm always um, sometimes shocked, uh, sometimes um, in awe, a lot of times in awe of how the tarot works. And I am absolutely so grateful that I have an opportunity to be able to work with the tarot because it's it's really an amazing tool um, to help understand some of the complexities of life. Now, as many of you know, I do Akashic Records readings. And so, and I'm also, I dabble a little bit in astrology. Um, not a lot, but some. And so the situation is that I met someone last year. Literally, they just kind of fell into my lap. And there was an instant recognition on both of our parts. Not on a physical level, but on a spiritual level. Okay. And, um... I'm such a Virgo. I'm so skeptical. You know, if I can't see it, touch it, taste it, feel it, you know, lick it or whatever, I don't believe anything. Um, that's basically for myself, not for other people. I have a gift of being able to offer other people information, but I'm very, very skeptical of information that I get for myself. That's just my nature. Um, but I had um, a couple of other people who read Akashic Records, and I've had four astrologers look at this particular uh, person and this particular situation. And what I discovered was that um, we have been together in three previous lifetimes. We were a couple in three previous lifetimes. And we have come back together in this lifetime. This is an opportunity to finish unfinished business. Okay. Um, now I speak to you many times about soulmates and twin flames. And I always say that these are, I'm very, very aware. I have to be very, very aware in order to give you the advice or the message of the cards to say that these relationships are very, very difficult. Um, and they are sometimes, uh, not they, they don't come about where there's going to be an actual physical coming together. Okay. Um, and that is the difficult part of having those types of relationships. But the relationships occur to help show you um, some things about yourself and to help move you up to the next level. So the rejection was not um, for me on a physical level a painful thing. Uh, because quite frankly, if he's not, you know, open to my feminine charms, wisdom, and gifts, then that's his loss. Um, what it was, what it was, it was a very difficult, um, painful thing on a spiritual level. And I had gotten a reading from Lauren Kay and two readings. And she kept saying in both readings, you know, you, you, you like him for the wrong reasons. You, you're, you're liking him for the wrong reasons. And I thought, what the hell is she talking about? And so I, I took that particular question, that particular statement, and I meditated upon it. What is it that I'm not saying about why it is that I like him? And what I got was that, okay, 
I talked to you many times about destiny, karma, fate, and free will. Okay. And on the path of life or the destiny path that I'm on, I'm a nine. And the nine is the last cycle. Okay. That means that I have attained and I bring with me through all of my other incarnations, I bring with me a lot of wisdom um, and a lot of knowledge in terms of how the natural laws in the universe works. Um, that's quite a frightening um, prospect, but nevertheless, I'm at the very end, okay? And so when I met this person, and understood really what the connection was all about. I felt that I, you know, I got to get this right because I don't want to have to come back and do this crap again. So I want to end this particular cycle. And, you know, if I come back again or when I decide to come back again, I won't have to deal with that anymore. And um, that was the reason why. I so much wanted this relationship because, it, and that was a very, very selfish reason for me uh, to want the relationship because basically I'm saying, well, damn it, you know, I want to spiritually get my crap right and I don't care about him getting his stuff right because I don't want to have to come back. That's not right. Um, and um, so any of the issues or problems or delays that have come about have come about because they are spiritual delays. OK, um, I am at a, a, a higher level of spiritual growth than he is. And I'm frustrated because he can't get on the same level with me. And damn it, I want this. I want him to be on the same level with me right now because I don't want to have to go through this crap anymore in another in another incarnation. I can't do that. Um, and <clears throat> when I'm coming from the space of, of being spiritually selfish, what that means is I don't allow or accept um, what it is really that he's he may be going through um, or where he is coming from. I can rationalize it on one level, but really it is about the unconditional love of accepting that that's where he is and that's where he is. But more so in terms of unconditional love towards him, it is about me. Because if I can't extend unconditional love to myself, then how can I really extend unconditional love to him or anyone else? If I don't understand really what my motivation is, then how can I understand or have empathy for someone else's motivations or lack thereof? Um, and once I got that, uh, it, it was really like a weight had been lifted off of my shoulders. Now, this does not mean that I don't still love the person, that I don't still care for the person, and that really I would like to have a physical um, life with this person. But it comes down to these two cards, justice and the world. Justice says that no matter how the situation plays out, whether I like it or not, the natural laws of the universe says that's the way it is. Okay? And that it is fair and that it is balanced. <clears throat> that's what justice is all about. That's the karma card. Now, the world comes in. And whenever the world shows up, and you, you guys have seen my readings, I say, well, this is the end of a cycle, you know, or it could be about travel. It could be, but it is about travel, it is about spiritual travel. But it is also, yes, about the end of the cycle. And, and this is what I got. In the four corners of the world card, I have the four figures here. These represent the four cardinal directions, north, south, east, and west. But they also represent the four elements, earth, fire, water, and air. Now, even though that's an eagle, I don't know if you can see that, uh, this represents Scorpio. And Scorpio is the only zodiac sign that has three in one. Um, and it is about being able to uh, crash and burn in life, but still come up, you know, and rise again from the ashes anew with a better vision of things, the eagle. And so what became apparent to me is that through life, through karma, through fate, through free will, through destiny, 
we come onto the physical plane and we have what we're doing is we're creating tangible things. Like I said, you know, if I can't see it, smell it, taste it, touch it, lick it, you know, rub on it. Okay. And it is about those things on the earthly plane that we can build up. And we have to figure out how to do that by using our will. Um, the fire. The fire is about goals. It is about ambition. It is about desires. But we also know that fire can be a very fast-burning, sweeping energy. It, it's also a very destructive energy. It is an uncontrollable energy. Um, Leo the lion can represent impetuosity, uh, impatience, immaturity, um, not sticking with things long enough. Um, so we have to figure out how to bring these two things together. <clears throat> When we can do this, this brings us in touch with our emotional self. Now, you can have the emotional self on the physical plane, and then you can have the emotional self on the spiritual plane. And the emotional self on the spiritual plane is recognizing that we are all, each and every one of us, simply by the sheer fact that we are born and we exist here, are loved, we are cared for, and in a sense, we are in a state of grace, okay? And once we can realize that, this is where the air sign comes in. The man, this is self-actualization. Um, it is being able to really understand your role and your place in the world, in the universe, um, as part of the species or the race. I'm not here to tell you that I am enlightened or that I am uh, in a state of perfect self-actualization. What I am in and what I discovered is that I'm in a state of grace. And uh, grace simply by its nature is perfection. So that means that whatever has happened for me, it is perfect. I don't have to like it, but it's perfect. And it is through the acceptance of, of saying that, yeah, it sucks, but it's perfect. That is how I arrive at my state of grace. Now, what is interesting about the world card is that the very, very old, some of the first tarot decks, the figure in this deck and in other decks, the world card is always depicted as a woman. Okay. And the wreath means that this person is protected. That's that state of grace. The two wands represent the balance. Um, the purple banner is an announcement of being in the perfected uh, presence of the divine. Okay. Because purple represents royalty. Um, and royalty, if you want to look at it from the Christian standpoint, uh, Jesus being the king. So this is being in the perfected uh, presence of the divine. But the very, very old cards, this figure is not a female. This figure is a hermaphrodite. And the hermaphrodite uh, or hermaphroditus is the child of Venus and Mercury. And we do have a Mercury and Venus transit going on right now. But hermaphrodite is two sexes. This is one person with two sexes. This represents the union of two people coming together to make a third thing. But it also represents finding out how to find that perfection in yourself. The yin, the yang, the light, the dark, the masculine, the feminine. Of being able to come to a... Um, understanding, not a, perf a perfect understanding, but an understanding of what it means to be in balance within the universal laws of life and being able to go with the flow. And again, it's sort of like the wheel, this kind of, you know, being fixed in the wheel and being able to accept life's ups and downs and not allowing it to throw you off balance too much one way or another. And so, as I said, the rejection on the physical plane for me wasn't where my pain was coming from. Um, it was more on a spiritual level. And I wasn't 
upset about the rejection. I was upset about the unexpectedness of it. Um, you know, that was totally a tower situation and I did not see it coming, but it had to happen so that I could arrive at this. Okay. And, um, I am, I, you know, I am really, truly astounded and I feel very, very fortunate um, to have received this information. And instead of being, you know, sad and crying and, you know, I ain't gonna lie, a couple of days I was pretty jacked up. But the more and more I listened to the message and the more and more I meditated on it, and the more and more I thought about it, I realized that it's probably one of the best things that's ever happened to me. There are many good things that have happened to me, but it, at this particular point and juncture in my life, I needed this particular lesson. Now, what does it mean moving forward? I don't know yet. Um, and before I finish, I wanted to explain to you about fate, free will, karma, and destiny. Because some of you hear me talking about, you know, with the Akashic Records, that, you know, karma is through your choices, and that's very, very true. The difference is fate. Fate is something that is immutable. It's something that you cannot change. Like me, I'm a Virgo woman. I'm a black woman. That's something I cannot change. That's acceptable, okay? But let's say that my karma, that I have issues that I bring over, and I do have issues that I'm bringing over from a past life. I bring those through those past lives, no matter how many incarnations, I'm bringing issues into the present life, okay? My karma. So how I can change my karma or for the better or the worse is I can either continue to make choices the same way as I did through those past incarnations, or I can choose something different in this particular art incarnation. That is how I change the karma, okay? And that is done through free will. Okay, um, but and then through those particular things, that is how you can shape your destiny. And um, I am, again, uh, just very grateful and very thankful um, that I was able to glean this lesson. And I hope that something in here um, can help some of you in whatever situations you may find yourself in. Now, I'm not saying that I'm healed and I'm over this and I'm ready to skip off in the la-la land. I still have more work to do, but uh, it does not become such a burdensome, worrisome, negative space kind of work. It becomes something that um, to, um, I don't know, savor and enjoy. I don't know if that sounds, I'm sure that sounds quite strange, but I can't explain it. And I think that goes back to the state of grace. Um, it's, it's something very, very beautiful. Now, going forward in this, no, the business is not finished. And I do feel that there will be more contact with this particular person but now I will be able to objectively stand back from it and not want to have control over something that I have no control over. <laughs> so um, the natural laws. And so this really boils down to um, recognizing that my ego, my ego on the physical plane was trying to control what should happen for myself on the spiritual plane and that it's completely against the, the, the natural laws. And I have to step back and let the universe and the natural laws do whatever they're going to do and understand and stay in that state of grace and understand that whatever comes is what comes, but that it is still perfect according to the natural laws. All right. I hope those messages helped you and I'll be back soon uh, with the reading for you guys today. I do have to catch up on a lot of work, Akashic Records readings and videos and things of that nature. So I'll be seeing you guys later and until next time, namaste.